Hi, this video was inspired by a video recently uploaded by Notepad Anon. I'm going to put a link in the description to, to that video. If you haven't seen Notepad Anon's channel, I recommend that you watch it because there are a lot of interesting videos um, concerning various role-playing games, but also RPGs that he designs. He, that's his thing. He designs RPGs for fun. And in a recent video, he talked about this role-playing game featuring uh, Spanish conquistadores versus Aztecs. It's called Blade and Cross, but it also features mechas, you know, huge robots. So I think I'm not entirely sure because the video only gives you like a glimpse of the RPG, but I imagine that it's perhaps Spanish mechas versus Aztec mechas, who knows? And it got me thinking about using science fantasy elements, specifically high technology, potentially alien technology in pseudo historical settings. That is settings that are somewhat realistic, but still want to integrate those high tech elements. Now, when it comes to using high tech in purely science fantasy settings, that is that are not seeking to represent that pseudo history, it's very easy to do so because you do not need to stick to a particular level or degree of, of believability of trying to convince the players, the game master that this could have actually happened in some way in the past, or if it didn't happen at all, you need to convince yes, the, the participants that it could have been possible. Who knows? But like I said, this is very difficult to achieve because of the circumstances in real life. That is in considering the current development of technology, uh, history. It's obvious that certain things didn't happen in that way. And like I said, in a more fictional environment, you can come up with all sorts of crazy reasons or excuses as to why high technology exists in the past. So the challenging aspect is it appears or makes itself evident when you are playing those, those pseudo historical settings. There are several difficulties to consider. Let's start with the high tech aspect. This also, this is also tied to uh, things related to alien technology. This is particularly noticeable here in Mexico. There are some images from ages ago that you could consider have some sort of hints or glimpses into some sort of weird science back then. But I will tell you why I think that's an incorrect interpretation considering the technology that we have seen in history. Let me tell you about a certain alchemist, Cornelius Drebel. I think that's the way you pronounce the name. If not, I'm going to put his name in the description of this video. Perhaps some of you know about him. He created the first, at least when it comes to being recorded in history, he created the first submarine, a wooden submarine in the year 1620 or 1621. I think it's 1620. So this alchemist, this happened in England. He created this wooden submarine powered by 12 crew members. They were going to be handling these oars. They were basically going to row their way across the Thames River. So they got all, they, oh, sorry, they all got in to the um, wooden submarine. And you could be thinking, what was how did they manage to breathe inside of that wooden apparatus? He had what you could call alchemical oxygen. He had these bottles of bottled oxygen. That's basically it. 
and so they went into the submarine and they started to get it moving across the Thames, along the Thames. And whenever they felt like they needed oxygen, they would take one of these bottles, they would pop it up, they would open the bottle, and now the entire chamber was filled with oxygen. And so they kept on going. Uh, I don't remember the exact distance, but there are videos. Uh, you can look it up in uh, Wikipedia. You can look it up here in YouTube. Uh, Cornelius Drevel. They tell you the exact distance they covered. And every time they needed oxygen, they opened the bottle up and the chamber was once again filled with oxygen, with breathable air. So even though that level of technology could seem somewhat primitive when compared to today's standards that gives you some clues as to how some things in the past could have been mistaken to, for real for high technology here in mexico the famous astronauta de palenque or palenque's astronaut this is basically an image that displays this individual inside some sort of contraption or vehicle and those that are well some of them are disinformation agents others are just too carried along by their an uncontrolled or unbridled imagination because imagination is wonderful to create some things and to interpret very specific things but when it comes to hard science you really need to control that imagination not discard it altogether but you need to just like take hold of it but there are many that think that the apparatus maybe i would say that they are wrong but yes maybe there is a possibility that that they could sorry that they could be right I doubt it, but in, in my opinion, they are incorrect because they immediately think that this apparatus is a, an L, a, some sort of high technology spaceship of, of sorts or, or space vehicle. And you see this sort of like, like I said, he looks like an astronaut and uh, there are some beings outside of the vehicle and they say, oh, they are aliens. and. And there are, there are several reasons as to why I think this is not possible. Now that we know that with lower technology you can achieve some significant results in the case of the submarine and you can point out many other things like the first computer created by Lord Byron's daughter. It was a computer that was extremely primitive. So it is more likely that this so uh, just like so-called spaceship was actually a submarine in my opinion if you take a look at it from that angle it makes sense and if you consider the beings outside of that submarine maybe there were aquatic creatures that that individual saw during his journeys and that were immortalized in that image This is further supported because people here in, in Mexico back then, they didn't use high technology. If they had the technological edge over the Spanish conquistadores, they would have stopped them from conquering their land. And this is not getting too much into the strategies and tactics of war. There are many things related to betrayal and such that is people within Mexico that were not happy with how things were being run by Aztecs. They were considered tyrants and many divide and conquered shields. They don't want you to pay attention to this. So it is more likely that it was a submarine because if they had that level of technology, they would have used their ships to attack the conquistadores. They would have perhaps rained <laughs> from rocks to explosives if they had that level of technology. Because if you have like a spaceship, it is obvious that you know some sort of mechanism or way to launch you into the air. 
So they could have attacked the conquistadores with projectiles or, or missiles of sorts, or maybe they had already, they would have had firearms, perhaps cannons. So that's how many pseudo historical science fantasy settings could fail. I actually have a, a role playing game that I got when uh, some time ago, like three or four years ago when it was on sale, like two or three dollars. But sadly, yes, that uh, I'm not going to mention the name of that role playing game because I don't want to promote it. The designer uh, is he's probably a, a Freemason, especially considering how another Freemason has been promoting his games lately. And he has supported uh, Putin from Russia. A lot of people are shilling for Russia when they want to ignore that Russia just last year it had the second place in the world of suicides of people that committed suicide. So that speaks that uh, people are very unhappy in Russia. In th if things are so great in Russia, why are they so unhappy? And if you take the symbol of the Russian flag and you compare it to the squares and compass symbol of the Freemasons, the tyrants of this world, the Satanists, you can see some very interesting similarities. The color of the flag is red, like Rothschild, Red Shield. You start to notice those things. But back to that um, shilly game, they pushed that uh, disinformation. If they had handled it, if they could, they could have handled it in a more pure science fantasy way. But they play a bit of like the pseudo historical angle. And you start to ask those questions if they had, if those primitive, primitive people or civilizations had access to those technologies and alien technology and all of that. Why didn't they use those things? Why didn't they weaponize those devices, those weapons, those vehicles in order to reign supreme over the entire planet? That's the nature of being human. If you find some advantage, you weaponize it in order to, yes, to reign supreme if possible. That's the reason how tyrants in current times have been uh, enslaving people. So it would make sense that those ancient empires would have used that high technology to rule over everyone and to stop the conquistadores, um, colonizers, etc. from taking over their land. Uh, changing it into something very different. So that's the main consideration or difficulty when it comes to handling those like science fantasy technological elements and you also want to make the setting somewhat believable or historically accurate. In my case, I think there are only two possible solutions. You either dismiss the entire thing altogether no, three possible solutions. You, you dismiss what, or two. Well, you dismiss what we know of history, of something that is historically accurate. And yes, although history has been modified to meet different political agendas, there are some things that are quite evident. So you could handle it as a parallel universe, a different dimension that is quite similar to our real planet Earth. And maybe you are just playing that time in that setting and you do not know how things will evolve with the passage of time. Their future could be very different from our own future. So you could take any ancient empire or people and you could say, well, they had access to this technology or these alien devices. And if things kept on going according to that parallel version of our own reality, then maybe, yes, the world in 2022 would be considerably different. Or you could insert some technological elements. So yes, those are two ways in total. Um, technological elements that are not exactly high tech, but they are alternative or different ways of handling technology that we know today. So in the case, like I said, of, of Cornelius, uh, he had this wooden submarine. Maybe you want to play 
in a setting featuring ancient Sumeria or mm, ancient Greece or mm, the Aztecs, the Aztec Empire, while using some vehicles and weapons that, although they were quite interesting in their design, they wouldn't have been game changers in, in the war. If you wanted to introduce submarines in, like I said, in the case of the Aztecs, because most of the, the fights, the battles and the intrigue and betrayal happened on land, on land, sorry. Maybe considering the submarine was not exactly agile, that is that wooden submarine called the turtle, if I remember correctly, it wasn't exactly like a viable machine of war. Maybe it would have changed the situation too much. So you can introduce those subtle technological elements while still respecting the way that history has evolved on a technological uh, level, or, or rather, how technology how, has leveled up across history. So yes, those are, are my thoughts. If you are going to handle things completely fictional, it's going to be very easy to come up with all sorts of arguments and explanations and reasons as to why there is high tech in certain primitive uh, uh, civilizations. And don't get, don't get me wrong, those civilizations, sorry, civilizations had great advancements, but we need to keep things level-headed without getting drunk in our own imagination. Or, like I said in the other case, you could handle it as a parallel dimension so that there is still historical accuracy in that point in time and you do not know how things will proceed in the future. Or you can add some rudimentary, at least compared to our current standards, rudimentary technology that isn't going to be a game changer in the greater scheme of things. I also always found it quite interesting, for example, they, they say that Alexander the Great had this like a giant magnifying glass that he used to channel the light of the sun and use it to burn the enemy ships, set them on fire. I always found that quite interesting because it sounds uh, somewhat viable. So you can play around with those concepts. Well, thank you for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know, especially if you have used high tech in ancient empires and civilizations, perhaps even in tribes. Let me know how that worked out for you in your sessions, in your campaigns. And definitely check out Notepad's, Notepad Anon's channel and his video on the Blade and Cross RPG that I told you of conquistadores, Spanish conquistadores versus Aztecs. And uh, thank you so much uh, for, uh, for watching this video once again. And thank you for uh, those uh, that have been supporting the channel by sending drive through RPG gift certificates. If you want to know how to support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you and see you later.